Hi everyone, it's Philip at NYC Music Services, back with another tutorial. This one's about playback in Sibelius, and more specifically using the Properties window to achieve superior results uh, through playback. And the Properties window is actually something that's not enabled by default when you open Sibelius, but you can access it easily by clicking this icon in the toolbar, or going to Window Properties, shortcut Option Command P. The Properties window controls many aspects of advanced features in Sibelius, but we're going to focus on playback today. I'd like to recommend that you look at Daniel Spreadbury's excellent tutorial video about creating composite symbols in Sibelius. This allowed us to create this nice looking trill the sharp and trill the flat, and while excellent um, symbols, they don't actually play back properly by default, but we can enable them for playback. So let's go ahead and first and listen to everything. Playback sounds good, but as you notice, the trills didn't actually play correctly to the sharp or the flat. And what we need to do is click on either the symbol or the line itself, and as we do that, we see these options activated in the Properties window. Now, if we uncheck Diatonic, we see this little box activated half steps, and we're going to change this to two half steps, and what that does is change the trill to sharp so that it actually plays one whole step higher or two half steps higher than the initial note which is the F sharp so it'll trill F sharp to G sharp. Similarly if we go to the trill f over the flat and uh, uncheck diatonic and leave half steps selected at one we'll have a nice trill from D to E flat uh, like is actually written. Great, so those are correct. A few other options that you can play with. Uh, you can actually control the speed of the trill. That's the number of oscillations per second. Let's go ahead and maybe change this to 11, and maybe this trill we can change to 10, just to get a little bit more variation. If you click Play Straight, Sibelius will actually play things exactly in time. If we leave it unchecked, it'll introduce some irregularities into the playback to make it a little more lifelike, so we'll leave it unchecked. And start on upper note, actually we'll just simply give a more stylized trill starting on the upper note of the trill instead of the, instead of the initial note. So those are those options. So we have playback on the trills correctly. Let's now go to these grace notes. Now if you recall, they played kind of fast and not really quite to my liking in this particular context. So what we can do is go to live start position and offset the start position of each of these grace notes. Now in Sibelius, this value is based on ticks, and 256 ticks equals one quarter note. So 64 ticks equals a sixteenth note, 32 ticks equals a thirty-second note. So I'm going to change this not quite as fast as a thirty-second note, but maybe a little slower than that to minus 40. This one will say minus 80, and this one will say minus 120. And now the other thing we want to do and we can do this for all three at once, is command click each of these to select them and then change the duration so it actually plays at the duration of roughly a little more than a 30 second note. Change each of them to 40. Good, let's hear that. That's getting better, but did you notice how the trill actually overlapped the grace notes? We don't want that, so what we can do is actually click on this note, and if we click on live duration, we actually see 512, which is the value of a half note. Let's decrease that by roughly the same amount, perhaps a little more than the total of the grace notes that we uh, offset just a moment ago. That was 120, so let's say 512 minus 120 plus a little more, let's say about 380.
So that actually has the effect of stopping the playback of this note before the grace notes start, which sounds great. By the way, you want to make sure that all these options, if you're using live velocity, start position, or duration, that live playback is actually enabled in the playback window, and you see that lightning bolt. If it's not, then Sibelius will ignore whatever is in the properties window and just play the default values that it sees on the screen. So you want to make sure that live playback is enabled. Okay, so we've taken care of our trills, we've taken care of our grace notes. How about this multo diminuendo and crescendo here? This actually looks great, but Sibelius doesn't know how to actually interpret the multo. Um, so what we're going to do is force it to create much more dramatic crescendos and diminuendos than it does by default. Not much of a difference at all. We click the hairpin, and now we see these options activated. And there are several options here. Auto is just literally what Sibelius will do automatically. If no dynamic is specified, it'll just go to the next dynamic level. Change will actually do a percentage change based on the initial starting volume. And so even if you're starting soft, if you do 100% change, it still won't be that great of a difference. Percent of maximum actually will give us much more dramatic results. That's actually literally the top value, the maximum value that Sibelius can play. And so we'll actually change this hairpin to say 95% of the maximum. Now we'll click on the diminuendo and do the same thing. And we'll go down and let's take it down to about 20% of the maximum volume. much more dramatic and satisfying. Now that we know how to do that, we can also add these uh, hairpins even if they don't show up in the score. For instance, this last note here, Sibelius just plays it at a very constant volume, while a real player might actually swell a little bit and then subtly taper off. So let's go ahead and add those uh, dynamic indications. We add a hairpin and a, a diminuendo. Let's go ahead and hide these by right-clicking on them and clicking Hide. Now let's click the first crescendo and we'll do the same thing, although we'll make it a little subtler than the Molto crescendo we worked on just a moment ago. We'll say Change and the percentage change, let's say a 50% change. Keep in mind this is not the absolute value that the maximum was. This is more of a percentage change based on the starting volume. So 50% and we'll take this down to let's say about 75 percent. So the final thing we want to do now that we know how to do that is this trill we worked on just a moment ago. When you're playing at forte and a trill, and then you have a subito pianissimo right immediately afterwards, a player might actually increase the volume ever so subtly to further heighten the dramatic impact of that subito pianissimo. So now knowing what we can do with hidden hairpins, let's go ahead and add one right here. We're going to hide it again by right-clicking, select Hide. And then again, we'll do a change, you know, a fairly subtle change, maybe 25 or 30 percent. Almost there, but did you notice how the trill went right into the next note? That would be very atypical for a player to play it like that. So what we want to do is actually stop this whole note a little before the end of the bar line. And remember our live duration, we'll click this and we see 1024, which is the value of a whole note. Let's stop it maybe 100 or so ticks short. That'll give us uh, roughly between a 16th and an 8th note um, space between the next note and should sound a little more uh, lifelike. So those are but a few options in the properties window using some of the advanced playback controls. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial video. Thanks so much for watching.